access to affordable housing units is the most important issue in this district today. And one of the main sources of affordable housing um, in this district, in this community, is public housing, NYCHA. And unfortunately, we have seen and experienced um, a conversion to privatization, which really um, is a game changer and an attack against the very fundamental idea of what public housing was supposed to be, not only in the city of New York, but across the country. But no matter how you package it, how it's sold or marketed, RAD is a displacement program. It will absolutely lead to an increased number of rapid evictions of people uh, in apartments who are not complying with NYCHA rules and regulations. And though that has always been the case, and we have seen NYCHA attempt to evict people um, for circumstances involving non-compliance, with THRAD, developers, private developers, have an incentive, an, a, a humongous incentive to evict and chase down non-compliance uh, cases. Uh, so if someone is doubled up, um, housing a friend or family, um, someone is not on the lease, the developers will try to execute an eviction, not just of the double up person, but of the entire household. And the incentive part comes from the fact that they will be reordering, or they have reordered, the priority list. So you no longer can just apply for public housing and get on a waiting list. Developers can turn that kind of general waiting list upside down and say, we want to prioritize people with the highest incomes. So what that means is that um, they will be looking to rapidly execute these evictions, say that the rationale behind it was non-compliance and kind of improving conditions generally in a, in a development or in a, or in a building, and then rapidly looking to place higher income residents or tenants in those apartments, um, which is very problematic because many, um, many experts around the city, housing experts and organizations have, you know, predict that there are far more people living in NYCHA um, than the f official numbers su suggest. We could, uh, under a hypothetical RAD like system-wide conversion, see a doubling or tripling up of our homeless population in a matter of months, right? Uh, so we should be very concerned, we should be alarmed that this is quietly taking place. And I, for one, am concerned as a candidate and that Hope Gardens underwent a conversion in a, under circumstances where a, major, uh, a, a large number of the residents only speak Spanish and are senior citizens or elderly or disabled. Uh, I'm not so sure that they had a fair voice in that process or a full understanding of what the implications were. And so I'm concerned that um, some level of injustice was done here or executed here uh, that doesn't increase the affordable housing supply and minimizes it. How many apartments were vacant in that building that you're mentioning? So we were knocking on doors over the last few days uh, in the course of our campaigning at a building that is uh, 330 Wilson Avenue, uh, very well known NYCHA senior building, senior citizen building. And what we found was that something about 15 apartments were vacant uh, today, right, post-RAD conversion. But many of the residents were telling us that, or reported to us, that something like 10 of the apartments had been vacant 
for a year or long. And that's unconscionable and even criminal, in my opinion, to think that those apartments have been held vacant in the presence of uh, an extraordinary waiting list uh, and demand, by, particularly by low-income individuals and families, to, uh, to gain access to those apartments. So we have two waiting lists that are important to understand. We have a waiting list of people who want to enter the NYCHA system. Right? They've been waiting for years to, you know, to, to be next on the list. And so they were denied that opportunity prior to the, to the ride conversion. Uh, um, senior citizens that are outside of the system and may have been next, next in line for an apartment were denied that opportunity right? because those units were held vacant. But even more fundamentally problematic is that the second waiting list is people who are already in the system, already in the development, who are, who are um, waiting to be transferred to a more suitable unit. So we have these buildings that are three floor buildings and don't have elevators. And we have lots of senior citizens who live on second and third floors who can't get up and down, or disabled people, uh, tenants, who can't get up and down stairs anymore. So they need to get into a senior building like 330 Wilson Avenue, which has an elevator um, and has a social environment that is very healthy um, and communal for senior citizens. And right next door, there's a, a, one of the better senior centers in Brooklyn. And to think that they were denied those opportunities pre-RAD uh, conversion is um, unconscionable. 